Richard Steele, the third man inside the ropes tonight for this 12-round heavyweight fight. Alongside the Iceman, John Scully, I'm Joe Tessitore. Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, home to Dokes. Holyfield scheduled for 12. The third fight for Evander Holyfield as a heavyweight. Of course, it was only 11 months ago that he TKO'd Carlos Sugar De Leon to unify and become the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Now tonight, Holyfield comes in at 208 pounds. Dokes, 225 pounds. Of course, Dokes, the former WBA heavyweight titleist. John Scully, Evander Holyfield, many questioning how we will, he will hold up against the punch of Dokes. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, this is a tough fight for him. This is a good heavyweight with fast hands. Dokes has been known for a long time with fast hands. He's got a lot of experience. He's a good combination puncher, which you don't see a lot with a lot of the heavyweights. They don't throw fast, sharp combinations, but he does. And, um, you know, I give Evander a lot of credit for taking a fight like this. And, um, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see soon enough. Looks like early on he's trying to make a point of not worrying about Dokes' power, but trying to get Dokes to worry about his power. Yeah, it's definitely true. He's um, he's a warrior. I mean, I, I like that about Holyfield. He doesn't fight like he's a smaller man coming up. Like he doesn't, he hasn't seemed to take time to adjust to the weight. He's just jumped right in, uh, you know, head first. Thing about Holyfield as a cruiserweight, he, he set a fast pace. He always did, and he um, actually in this fight, Dokes came out and tried to set the pace, and he did so for about a good 15 or 20 seconds. But it actually seems like it's already maybe began to wear on him a little bit. Plays right into Holyfield's hands. There's a good left hand followed up by a right hand by Holyfield. Now on the inside. Right hand over the top of that jab. Evander Holyfield scores well. And that's one thing Holyfield brings up as a formerly smaller man. He has good hand speed, and he's a good textbook boxer. Dokes has gotten away. He has a fast jab, and Dokes has gotten away with using that fast jab with a lot of slower heavyweights. And oh. I think uh, that's straight low. Left hand by Holyfield. And Dokes affected, so referee Richard Steele is going to give him the time to recover. I know it's an illegal blow, but nonetheless, it does play into the mindset of what we were talking about, about Holyfield letting the bigger man know that he's there. Well, without a doubt, I mean, and, and believe it, not, not that that's the case in, in this situation, but some fighters do that on purpose. Indeed. That's that's the reality of it. They let them know, you know, I'm, I'm right here and I'm, I'm fighting hard and, and I'll get dirty if I have to. I'll, you know, I'm going to make a statement. So um, whether he, Holyfield meant to do it or not, that definitely alerts. The statement is made. Oh, it, it alerts Dokes. He knows he's in there with a guy that, that would do that. Another left-right combination from Holyfield. And, and to, to go back to what I was saying, Dokes has fast hands for heavyweight. And, he, and he's been used to boxing these guys and sticking that fast jab. But Holyfield countered it with a really nice right hand. Good opening stanza by the former cruiserweight champ. Evander Holyfield spent the past year campaigning as a heavyweight. TKO wins over Quick Tillis and Pinklin Thomas and opened up well in the first round here tonight against former heavyweight titleist Dynamite Michael Dokes. There is Dokes with his trainer Bill Slayton, 30 years old, 37 wins, a loss, and two draws for the former heavyweight titleist. Now here we go. There's just um, Holyfield. Oh, there's a good headbutt, which I didn't catch when it happened. But uh, so he got headbutted and hit low at the same moment. It's a double dip right there. Yeah, that's no fun. And that that shows you how much the the low blow hurt that he didn't even acknowledge the headbutt. So that'll tell you what kind of pain you're dealing with. Some guys play it off. 
others have to deal with it. Michael Dokes had to deal with that shot sure. right there. Yeah. Round two scheduled for 12. Is there anything that you took away stylistically in that first round, Ice, that'll tell us what should we see for the remaining 11 rounds here? Well, one thing, like I said, uh, Dokes is usually the fast guy. He's known to be a fast-handed puncher. And against some of those bigger, slower guys, now there's a low blow by him, maybe on purpose, but he um, he's known as a fast guy, but he's getting outspeeded here, which I think is unusual for him, and is probably playing on his mind a little bit, so you, it could be a thing where Dokes, instead of letting his hands go, he might he might find himself easing off a little bit, afraid to get countered. So I, I would look at that. Right hand to the body from Dokes. Holyfield tries to separate with a left hook. Goes back to the one-two. He had success utilizing that right hand behind the jab in the first round. Double jab from Holyfield. Dokes snaps Holyfield's head back with a jab. Right hand to the body from Holyfield. Right lead from Holyfield. He's not bashful, is he? Willing to wrong. throw at all times. And I like, I love that about him, that he's moved up to this weight and he jumps right in head first with these guys. He's making a statement just as far as he's letting the world know that he's willing to, to trade punches with the bigger guys. 20 and 0, 16 knockouts. I definitely get the sense that the speed difference and the counter punching of Holyfield is surprising Dokes a little bit. He seems like I've already seen slight signs where it seems like he's kind of hesitating from throwing his punches. Whereas normally, like I say, when you see him fight the bigger guys, he generally is a, is a whirlwind when he lets his hands go. He throws four or five crisp shots in a row. He hasn't really been able to do that here. Well, in that first round, he threw out what was not a lazy jab, just a solid, good, average jab from Dokes. And he was countered with ease by the right hand of Holyfield, so maybe that's playing on. Well, that, that's where I actually got it from, because he threw two or three in a row, and on the second or third, he got countered. And uh, I, I was actually, in my mind, I was thinking of how sharp his jab looked, and Holyfield just nullified it right away. And you actually haven't seen Dokes really pop the jab since then. Testament to the skill and athleticism of Holyfield. Such a dangerous combination he has always possessed. And you see a lot of times when they trade punches, Dokes steps back and visibly takes a deep breath. That's that's not a good sign at all for him. Not with Holyfield. The former champ and the real deal through two. Michael Dokes preparing himself for the third round against the young gun, the undefeated Evander Holyfield. Of course, Dokes himself had such success early on in his career. He turned pro at age 18 in 1976, and he took the WBA heavyweight title, the first round TKO of Mike Weaver in 1982. Look back at the action from the second round. Now that was that first borderline low blow from Dokes, and I wonder if he did it on purpose. I mean, it's you know I don't want to accuse him of that, but it wouldn't totally shock me if he did. It's an old school move. Oh, of course. And he's a heavyweight that came up in the old school golden era of 1970s heavyweights. In fact, many may remember Dokes's first appearance on the national TV stage when he was a 19-year-old. He fought a nationally televised exhibition against the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. That's right, and uh, he's also he was also on the stage fighting Teofilo Stevenson of Cuba as an amateur. And he fought Greg Page, he fought John Tate, he, he fought all the big names as an amateur. So this is a guy who has a huge amateur background behind him, as, as does Holyfield. Loses his mouthpiece on that exchange when he threw off the left hand. There's a short right hand on the inside, and now Doke's showing some of that hand speed and volume combination punching that you rave about in the heavyweight ranks, Ice. There you go, I mean, that that, that was a nice looking combination they threw. He's doubled and tripled up on the hooks. You just wonder how much of that's gonna take out of him. Combination from Holyfield, an uppercut in the midst of those four punches.
hard to believe Holyfield gives up 17 pounds and is really a natural cruiserweight when you see the way that he handles himself in the ring against these heavyweights. He fights like a big man, and, and he actually turned pro at light heavyweight. His first fight was as a light heavyweight, so and you're talking about obviously a naturally small man, but he's digging right in there, and he and he takes the punches. I mean, he's not he hasn't got hit with massive punches, but he's getting hit by Michael Dokes, who's a legitimate heavyweight, and he has not shown any sign of, of getting really hurt by it. Left hand by Dokes. Lou Duva, who does nothing but rain down compliments on his fighter Evander Holyfield. Even Duva revealed to some of the media members this week that he was concerned about Holyfield being able to handle Dokes' punching power. Because Dokes has the, the heavy hands, but he has the speed. And Holyfield, I mean, um, Dokes puts punches together nicely. Like a lot of guys, heavyweights can throw four or five punches, but they're not direct laser beam type punches. You can see Dokes is a well-schooled fighter. You can see his experience and his skill level. So um, I would say this is by far the most skilled heavyweight that, that Holyfield's had to deal with so far. After beating Carlos de Leon to unify the cruiserweight titles in April of 88, three months later, he took on Quick Tillis, a former Mike Tyson opponent. In fact, you remember that Tillis went the distance with Tyson. And then five months later, just this past December 1988, Holyfield TKO'd Pinklin Thomas, another former Tyson victim. Now here he is, March 89, taking on Dokes. Best test so far for Holyfield as a heavyweight. End of three. You know, this guy's dead. This guy's dead. Now listen. Now look. Go to the body. Go to the body. Now listen, don't be... What are you getting hit with them punches for? You got no business getting with them punches. Now go to that body. You understand? Right? Now look. Take your time. Don't throw yourself away. You understand? But stay close. Now here's Dokes with that speed, and he, and he lets off nice combinations, and Holyfield stays right there in with him. I like the body punching, but I, I love the way Evander comes back. Evander's not going to be run over by these guys. You, he's made that very clear. Now that's a good right hand. He took that well. Luduva has to be happy about that. Dokes opened up a bit more in that third round, but Holyfield was there to answer him. They never that, seen me be here, Mike. Oh, Mike. Many interested observers here. The management of Michael Dokes ringside. They realize how important this fight is for the future of the one-time heavyweight titleist. Round number four. Scheduled for 12 here at Caesars Palace on the Vegas Strip. Now you can see the speed difference. Holyfield got off three or four shots. Dokes replied with a right hand, and Holyfield was already gone. You know, he, he missed him by a good foot. So when Holyfield decides to box, he has that type of potential where he can make Dokes miss and make him even more tired. That's, that's a factor that I'm looking at here. I, traditionally, Holyfield will get stronger as he goes. Holyfield, uh, Dokes, excuse me, Dokes seems to be taking periods in the rounds where he's sucking wind. It's noticeable. Double jab from Holy. Now his jab appears to me that Doak's jab has slowed down quite a bit. He threw two jabs there and easily got countered with Holyfield's jab. So I think if Holyfield kept his distance here and let his own speed become more of a factor, I think he could start picking Doak's apart a little bit here. There's a good sharp double jab from Holyfield. He's got a lot of bounce to him. And Dokes does not. And that, that's the noticeable thing. It seems like he's what you call pushing his punches. He's forcing himself to do it as opposed to just letting it come naturally. 
And he does that. Dokes throws that right uppercut to the body. He's done it there. He did it again. He, he does it all the time, but he doesn't follow up with a left hook. So Holyfield has nothing to worry about. I'd like to see Doak start following up, doubling up on his punches, follow up with hooks after he throws that right uppercut. Give Holyfield something to think about. Is that caused by something Dokes isn't doing, that he's just not executing and completing the combination? Or is it him being conscious of what Holyfield can do in return? It could be a combination of both. One thing I, you have to understand, like when you're actually in there, like I could sit here and watch and say he should follow up with the hook. But when you're in there, sometimes your opponent might do just a little something that's un unnoticeable to the average person, to the person in the crowd, and um, it could nullify you. Maybe he's trying to throw the hook, but Holyfield has a way of maneuvering himself and he can't get it off. End of four in Vegas, Holyfield and Dokes. Georgie Benton and Lou Duva in the corner of Evander Holyfield. Manager Ken Sanders. Now three fights into this heavyweight campaign. This the most important of that run tonight against Dokes. When you catch punches, come back to the body. And just move your hands. You ain't got to, you know, just move on it. Be winning, you understand? Okay. Holyfield has the style of an in-the-ring daredevil and a couple of generations of daredevils ringside here at Caesars Palace. Robbie and Evil Knievel. Of course, their feats at Caesars Palace a little more dangerous than what we're seeing tonight, Ice. A little bit. If you've seen the fountains outside, <laughs> you know how much. Of course, taking a big right hand from a skilled heavyweight no easy task and such is the case tonight as Evander Holyfield tries to avoid the power punches of Michael Dokes Holyfield in the blue trunks Dokes the former heavyweight titleist in the white trunks round number five I think that body shot by Holyfield might have slowed Dokes up a little bit there he uh just not just for the fact that he stopped punching, but the look on his face, it looked like it had took a toll on him a bit. Dokes 225 pounds, six foot three. Very inviting target to the body he is for Holyfield. And Holyfield, good game plan to try to stay consistent going to the body. Meanwhile, Dokes has not been able to place a lot of good body shots against Holyfield. He tries with the left hand there. Holyfield answered with a right hand upstairs. Holyfield for a heavyweight. I know he's only 208 pounds, but one of the smallest wasted heavyweights you'll ever see. Right. He looks like a middleweight. He looks like he's still a light heavyweight, actually. And, um, yeah, very well conditioned, apparently. I mean, he looks good. He looks like, a, like you would want a fighter to look like. What I like about Holyfield, what I think he should be doing here, because if you notice, Dokes is starting to tilt forward from the waist up. He's tilting forward, almost like he's looking at the floor. That's a bad sign. That's a, something a smart fighter like Holyfield will pick up on if he hasn't already. You want to... Dokes' force is pushing, making him fall forward. You can step back and make, let him fall forward and, and put him right into your uppercuts to the body, doubling the power of them. Another thing, he's There's flat. a great example of it right there. Right. He, 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 I'm sure Holyfield's a smart fighter. He, he sees it, and he's just looking to, to time it. I think the more fatigue Dokes gets, the more he's going to tilt forward from the waist up and, and get get ripped up on the inside. But one thing that Holyfield should also be doing right now is stepping around little steps because he can touch Holyfield. He can he can touch Dokes with some good little shots and then step around. See now he waits there and that's what happens. Now he turned a little bit there. That was good. And you see how good he got two or three shots off. After Dokes had a three punch combination, they paused for a moment. And Holyfield once again scoring with the uppercut, just like John Scully said he would. Dokes leaning forward, tilting forward with that head, and Holyfield able to take advantage here in round number five with the uppercuts on the inside. That left hand straight towards the belt line again from Dokes. That's about eight borderline low blows. Five rounds in the books. 
good crowd here at Caesars Palace. Holyfield Dokes look back at round number five. Well, now Holyfield just slips out, but there's the right hand. Dokes, now one thing, Dokes landed a good right hand, but he's still, he's falling forward as he throws it. Like if he missed that, he probably would have fell forward and fell right out of the ring. That's the way it appeared. You see, he lean, he's leaning. You see that back foot kind of fall right, forward. Right, it comes up. It, it's like he's losing losing uh, uh, control of himself a little bit. Then on the inside, Dokes was able to connect, and Holyfield. See, Holyfield turned him. Just like I was saying, he can turn him, and uh, and Dokes will be forced to look for him. He'll be forced to walk into things because if Dokes is a little bit tired, his reflexes won't be as good. Stepping around and punching off that would serve Holyfield very well in this spot. If there's any one thing I think you can take away from this fight so far, with five rounds complete, is that on paper Dokes is much the bigger man. Yes. But in the ring, it doesn't necessarily play out that way. No, I think conditioning and agility is is evening the table, so to speak. Uppercut combination from Holyfield, then over the top with a right hand. Round number six, scheduled for 12 here in Vegas. Holyfield is definitely the more nimble man, so he's able to get off punches when Dokes isn't quite ready to defend against them. He's by far the superior athlete. But it's not as if there's a deficiency when it comes to skill. Holyfield is skilled as they come. Oh, for sure. He's a good textbook, technical fighter. He knows what he's doing in there. He does a lot of good things, a lot of good technical things. And um, and actually, compared to other heavyweights, I think Dokes is good in those respects. But compared to Holyfield, he's like a step behind. Good enough to have... Held a portion of the heavyweight title okay? back in 82 and 83. See the warning from Richard Steele here in round six. Dokes going to the body with a left hand. Two punch combination, left right. Holyfield comes back with one of his own. And Dokes' offense is good when he throws punches. It's just that he's in with a guy. I think Holyfield's lack of size is kind of working in his favor here. Against the bigger, more lumbering guys, Dokes would assume the role of Holyfield. Exactly. And would look good doing it. But here he looks like a guy who can't move. Right. He's, he's like one step behind. And it's got to be frustrating for him because he's, he's no doubt, more often than not, the faster guy between him and his opponent. And uh, he's, he's, he's running into a guy that's more nimble, more agile than most of the guys that he encounters. Field now challenging that midsection of Dokes. You can see Lou Duva, Georgie Benton in the corner of Evander Holyfield. They know how important this is. Going after that ultimate goal of contending for the heavyweight championship. Of course, the current undisputed champion, Mike Tyson, just two weeks removed from his TKO of Frank Bruno here in Vegas. Last year, Tyson destroyed Michael Spinks to officially take that throne as the top heavyweight in the world. And Duba and Benton feel very strongly that one day Evander Holyfield will meet up with Iron Mike, the undisputed champ. A little something extra there. Come here. I don't want that no more, okay? Richard Steele trying to take control as Evander Holyfield lingering in the corner of Michael Dokes, and the veteran cornerman Lou Duva comes over to escort him back. Of the left eye of Michael Dose. Must have opened up in the final moments of that sixth round. So now an extra concern for the former WBA titleist. Now there's a fast hands by Dokes, but Holyfield stands right up to him, digs right back into him. 
So, and that's a key thing. That might not look like much, but you have to stand your ground. You want to hit me late? Well, I'm going to hit you right back. So we have reached the halfway point in this heavyweight fight. Round number seven, scheduled for 12. Holyfield unbeaten. Dokes only one loss in his career. 37 wins for Dokes. Good shot. Good hook. He's, he's wobbled with that one, I think. And Holyfield should come up to the head. He's digging on the body shots. He should follow up with head shots. Don't leave your punches down at the bottom, at the body. Left hook lands again, and you can see the blood streaming down the left side of the face of Michael Dokes. He comes forward, back to the inside. And Holyfield just did what I thought Dokes was supposed to be doing. He threw the right uppercut to the body, and he followed up with the left hook, and he landed it flush on Dokes' mouth. Punch it out! Punch it out! Like Another there. left hand strays a little low, and you get a warning from Richard Steele. And the problem is he leaves it down there. He, land, he lands it or he doesn't, but he leaves it down there. He should come up to the head like Holyfield does. There he goes. Now, now that was good. He came up to the head with it. You have to double up, follow up on your shots. Good combination from Holyfield, dug underneath with the right hand and then up top with the left hand. And Richard Steele is going to tend to the wrap on the right glove of Dokes. Some concern in that corner of Dokes here in round seven. Holyfield has scored well, plus Dokes is dealing with the cut near the left eye. Work your way out. Work your way out. Let's go. Now, Dokes is definitely in, in, in a little bit of trouble here as far as physically. It looks like his body might be breaking down a little bit. I'd like to see Dokes and Holyfield mix in more jabs and, and uh, set up his right hand, land the big, big right hand. Landed two good right hands in that exchange. And now, after dealing with the right glove, you can see tape on the left wrist of Dokes coming loose. Right, right, right. Time, go to the corner, go. Time, come on. Come on, let's go. Really taking away from the offensive series of Evander Holyfield in this round. In that corner, taking their sweet time, aren't they? Well, I was just about to say, if they were smart, they would take, take as many seconds as they could. I thought Dokes got shook up early in that round. I thought he wobbled slightly when he got hit with the hook in the beginning of the round. And um, so he might not still be recovered. So they need to be good corner men and, and take their time here. Bill Slayton and company trying to give Michael Dokes every chance he could have. But you can see that cut. Starting to get ugly, and Holyfield targeting it with right hands. Another right hand scores for Holy. And there's a good short left on the inside. What a nice exchange. Holyfield gets the best of it. And those combinations take a lot out of Dokes. Holyfield could step up his game here and pile up the points, if not hurt Dokes. Big seventh round for Evander. Climate has changed for Michael Dokes. Dealing with a cut and dealing with a surging of Andrew Holyfield. Let's listen in. Now, even without the cut, that was Holyfield's round all the way just because of the combination. Now, that's when, in the beginning of the round, when he heard him with the hook, he, um, Dokes actually recovered pretty well from him, but he was definitely wobbled with that. 
later in the round. Here's more of the same. I mean, Holyfield's digging good shots. And um, his power, I mean, he's not a one-punch knockout puncher, but those punches definitely have an effect. And every time he gets in a little bit of dire straight, it seems like Dokes comes back with a borderline low blow. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or not, but, you know, it could it could keep Holyfield on his toes, you know, because he says, wow, a couple more inches, and, and that's definitely a low blow. Do those right hands scored by Holyfield tell you that they will be there for the remainder of this fight? I think the more fatigue Dokes gets, the more the right hand will land. Dokes making a conscious effort to come out strong to open up this eighth round. Now, he looked very good there, but if he can't sustain that, then the tide's probably going to turn in a bad way right here. Tries the body shot. Let's see if he can keep that pace up. He allows Holyfield to the inside. I think Holyfield's letting a little bit of an opportunity slip here. When, when Dokes throws those combinations like that, the smart thing to do would be to return fire and get on him right away before he can recover. Because Dokes is definitely trying to recover right here. Holyfield comes with a right hand that misses and then falls in with a left hand. Richard Steele asking for the fighters to work out of that position, which they do. Holyfield uppercut left hook combination. And that's the key. You have to follow up with the punches. When you throw the uppercut, even if you miss it, come back with the left hook. Dokes working well on the inside, goes with a one-two and tries to send Holyfield back with a left hook. Now it looks like Dokes is fighting like the bigger man here in round number eight. It just seems like every time he throws a good combination, it takes so much out of him. But at least he's working here. Oh, definitely. No, he's, he's working and Holyfield's not, so... But there's a lot of time to go now. No doubt. Wow. Good left hook from Dokes. Much needed rally. Holyfield returns fire with a right hand. Holyfield still with that bounce. Holyfield. And now two right hands. And he's got to get that jab in there. He's got to slow this guy down. Good shots there. Holyfield scores with three punches. Dokes comes back with a left hook. Heck of an eighth round here in Vegas. This is a very good round, but the, the, the telltale thing is going to be how Dokes reacts to it, how Dokes comes out for the next round. That tape on the right wrist coming loose again. Good right hand. Holyfield comes back with a two-punch combination, including the uppercut, and sends that, off another uppercut on the inside. And he's turning now. Now, that's beautiful. Holyfield is turning like he's supposed to. He's forcing Dokes to turn to his own left, and he's catching him with good shots. John Scully, you called it. Dokes would need to keep it up because Holyfield would return, and he did. He finishes up this eighth round very, very strong. Um, Dokes doing some good work off the ropes. He looked, this is a world-class heavyweight letting his hands go. He looked good. But I don't think uh, the conditioning was, was a great factor on his side. Holyfield comes back. Holyfield definitely, um, you know, he's always going to come back on you. So you have to be in great condition to fight him. But as an offensive machine, Dokes is sharp. He's very sharp. We saw the best of Dokes in that eighth round. But we also saw the heart of Holyfield. You know, it's funny, that might have been Doke's best round and his worst round <laughs> in the same round. Very, very well stated. But he's fighting, though. I'll tell you, he, he, he showed signs of fatigue several rounds ago, but he's, he's working in there. I mean, he's not, he's not a quitter, that's for sure. He's definitely trying to dig his good shots in there. Scheduled for four more rounds. The longtime heavyweight, former titleist Michael Dokes, being pushed to the limit by the newfound heavyweight, Evander Holyfield, former undisputed cruiserweight champion as of a year ago. 
now three fights into his heavyweight campaign. Holyfield having success with those uppercuts on the inside. And again, it's because Dokes is, is leaning. He's getting fatigued. And to relieve the pressure on your body, fighters instinctively lean forward. That, that alleviates some of the pressure. Dokes' his manager looking on as we've reached round number nine. Will this be a win that jump starts this phase of the career of Michael Dokes? Or will Evander Holyfield be able to get right through him and advance his cause for a potential matchup with Mike Tyson someday? Holyfield looks comfortable on the inside. He definitely does, but he, he counters well. Now there, he missed with the right hand, but he tried to counter with the right hand. He actually countered with the right hand and the left hook, and he missed both of them. But that was obviously textbook work. Short right hand on the inside from Dokes, and now he turns Holyfield around before they bring it out to the center of the ring. Now Dokes seems fatigued and slow with his feet. I think Holyfield needs to do what he was doing earlier a few times where he steps around and catches him because he could catch Dokes with a lot of good sharp shots off of the turns. He could force Dokes to turn and look for him. Because right in front of him, sooner or later, Dokes is going to regain his, his senses and his wind and he's going to let two or three hard shots go. Much the way he did in the first half of that eighth round and we've seen glimpses here in round number nine. Holyfield back to the inside. At this point, Dokes' shot is to be set. He has to have his feet set. If Holyfield kept him turning, Dokes, it would take Dokes a long time to get his feet set. And I don't think he would really be able to do that effectively. That's when Holyfield has been at his best. When he's getting the angles, you see the uppercut there from Evander Holyfield. End of nine here in Vegas. Good fight. Is this the end of the road for 30-year-old Michael Dokes as a heavyweight contender? Bad cut over the left eye. Caused in round number six. You can't miss the guy with the jab. You understand? Cut up and everything. Then you won't throw yourself away. Now use a good jab. Hold it there. Now box the guy in circles. Will this be the moment that Evander Holyfield grabs a significant win as a heavyweight? Tenth round scheduled for 12. Holyfield, the number one ranked heavyweight in the world. Michael Dokes, the former titleist. Dokes going to the body early on. And Georgie Benton gave Holyfield good advice, something that I was saying for the last few rounds. He said, box him in circles. Keep him, what he means is keep him turning, keep him walking into your punches because Dokes is a little bit tired now and he's flat-footed. Holyfield could turn him into punches all day long. You can see Holyfield is nimble. His legs, he's got a lot of bounce in his legs. He should take advantage of it. He shouldn't just bounce in front of Dokes. That's kind of pointless. It doesn't really give you any kind of benefit. Holyfield, a lot of bounce. He could go to a little stick and move strategy here in these last three rounds, take him and coast home to a victory. Will yeah. he do that? He's been so tempted on the that. inside. That's to the thing. I mean, I mean, you have your man set up where you could get on your toes and pump the jab and really look good doing it. He could look like a young Muhammad Ali here. He's got a tight. You, know, you have to take advantage of what your opponent gives you. And right now he has a tired, slower man in front of him. I would get on my toes and, and, and punish him from a distance. Dokes' only chance is for you to stand in front of him so he can land a home run shot. But Holyfield has been so willing. Oh, it's a big left uppercut uh -oh. by Holyfield. He's hurt there. Chopping right hand. Dokes is hurt badly. Got to put those combinations together. Oh, oh short left shot. hand on the inside. Big, big shot. Richard Steele collects Holyfield. And this fight is over. Steele jumped in and ends it. Wow. A 
one heck Vander of a finish. Vander Holyfield, what a finish it was. Now that makes a name for him in the heavyweight division. That's what people want to see. They want to see endings like that. Some question the move to heavyweight. Mark it down. He's fought Quick Tillis, Pinklin Thomas, and now Michael Dokes. 